hey guys welcome back in this video we're going to talk about how to check the feasibility of a reaction using the electrode potentials so what do i mean by checking in the um, feasibility of a reaction so let's say the question is asking you uh, has given you an ionic equation between two ions and is asking you will this reaction take place Will this species get oxidized and will this species get reduced? Now, how will you decide whether or not that reaction is feasible? Now, the easy way to do it is by checking their electrode potential. So, let's take an example and see if we can figure out the feasibility of that reaction. That is, will that reaction take place? Now, um, the equation given to us is calcium plus magnesium 2 plus turning into magnesium and calcium 2 plus that is draw your arrows and understand what is happening in this equation the question is telling you magnesium ions are supposed to be reduced and the question is telling you calcium atoms are supposed to be oxidized so if we connect the half cell um, half cells, will this reaction indeed take place? Let's see. So once you have decided or found out what the question is telling you, you will write the electrode potential reactions. That is Mg2 plus plus 2 turning into magnesium atom. Calcium 2 plus plus 2 electrons turning into calcium atom. So now you know from the data booklet, you will see the electric potential of both. Great. Now, draw the arrow for what is supposed to happen according to your prior knowledge. That is, that is, which one is more negative over here? Which electrode potential is more negative? Of the um, calcium ion, right? So, since more negative, what is supposed to happen? It's supposed to lose electrons, since more negative. Therefore, it's supposed to be oxidized, meaning it's going to lose electrons. Over here, the electrode potential is more positive. Therefore, in this reaction, they're supposed to gain the electrons. Therefore, forward reaction. Now, after you've done that, you're going to compare your arrows with that of the initial ones you drew on the main equation. So if I redraw it, it's going from magnesium ions to magnesium atom and it's going from calcium atom to calcium ions. So now see if your arrows match. Yes, it does. According to you, according to your electrode potential values, magnesium ions are supposed to turn into magnesium atom. And it is indeed happening over here. And according to your electrode potential value, calcium atom is supposed to turn into calcium ions. And yes, it is indeed happening over here. Great. So that is one way of figuring out how to, um, I mean, figuring out the feasibility of an uh, reaction. So now let's take another example to check its feasibility. So let's say the equation is giving you the reaction between copper and nickel iron. So the reaction is telling you again, draw your arrows. The reaction is telling you nickel is going to be reduced. And the reaction is telling you copper is supposed to be oxidized. Now predict it to yourself about what is really supposed to happen using the electrode potential values. So the electrode potential is telling you copper turning into copper atom, copper ion turning into copper atom has a value of positive 0.34 and nickel turning into nickel atom has a value of negative 0.25. Which one is more negative? Negative 0.25. Therefore, over here, it's supposed to release electrons, meaning it's supposed to get oxidized. 
This is more positive, therefore it's supposed to be reduced, hence gain electrons. Now match it with the arrows you had initially drawn in the main equation. This copper go from copper atom to copper ion according to rho electric potential value? No, it doesn't. In reality, it's supposed to go from copper ions to copper atom, not the other way around. Which is why you can directly say this reaction is not feasible. This reaction won't take place. Rather, if your equation told you Cu2 plus plus nickel turning into Cu plus nickel 2 plus iron. Now, in this case, this uh, reaction would have been feasible because it's going from copper ion to copper atom at the same time going from nickel atom to nickel ions. Okay. So this reaction would have been feasible. However, this equation is not. Okay. Right. So drawing arrows and comparing your electrode potential values is one way of figuring out whether or not it is a feasible reaction. The other way and the way you're supposed to actually do it in the paper, that is, write your answers in, is using the cell potential formula, right? That is, um, did I write it? That is basically, I'll write it again, E cell, standard D cell, is going to be Or you can write it as reduction, oxidation, right? Either way around, you can write it. Now, your job is to look at the equation and see what they're telling in terms of which species will be oxidized and which species will be reduced. So let's see. They're telling you copper is supposed to be oxidized. And they're telling you nickel is supposed to be reduced. Now, remember the electrode potential values, which is over here. So, let's see. They're telling you copper is supposed to be oxidized. Where is the copper value? Yeah. So, this is your copper electrode potential. Right? And they're telling you nickel is supposed to be reduced. So, this is your reduction value. So take those two values and input it into the formula. This is reduction. This is oxidation. Right? Keep the formula as it is and just input the values. That is, you're going to have minus 0.25. That is the value of reduction. Minus the value of oxidation. Now notice one thing. You're, oh, I had written it over here. Anyways. So notice one thing your reduction electrode potential and your oxidation electrode potential. Once you subtract it, your final value turns out to be negative. Minus 0.59 volt. Now the moment you see your E cell value to be negative, you can answer your reaction is not, which reaction? This reaction is not feasible at all. Because E cell can never be negative. It can never be negative. It's always supposed to be positive. Right? So therefore, to check the feasibility of a reaction, what you can do is use the formula, the E cell formula, that is uh, electrical potential um, cathode, and sub subtract that with electrical potential of anode. Once you subtract the two values, if your final value is negative, that means the reaction is not feasible, right? So that is how you can check the feasibility of any reaction. Okay. All right. So the other thing to note is you're not supposed to plug in the values according to um, the true nature of the reaction. That is, uh, I'll explain what I mean. Is... So let's say if you write down the electrode potentials and you see that 
Um, so the more negative electrode potential over here, it's supposed to release the electrons. And for the more positive electrode potential, it's supposed to gain the electrons. So you know that actually this is what's supposed to happen. But you don't, you're not going to plug in the values according to the actual reaction. Because in that case, it is going to be positive. Because see, um, if I write it as 0.34 minus minus 0.25, my final answer is 0.59. Right? So this is positive and this is feasible. But in reality, the equation they've given you is not in terms of the copper ion going to copper atom and is not in terms of copper atom going to copper ion, which is why um, you're not going to plug in the values according to what is supposed to happen in reality. Okay? So you're going to plug in the values according to the reaction, according to the equation they have given you. Otherwise, your answer is going to be wrong. Okay? So plug in the values according to their main equation. And if it is negative, not feasible. Okay? So that is it for this video. So in this video, we learned how to calculate the feasibility of any reaction given to you. So yeah, see you in the next video.